to another episode. We are here with a 2004 Humvee M998 outfitted with that helmet top and a ton of other things. We're talking a red dot AC system, those fold and go seats. I think they're out of a minivan or a Chrysler or something like that. Pretty cool interior on this truck. A brand new custom tire carrier that we highlighted on the episode prior. Uh, black Rhino 20 inch wheels, 40 inch Maxxis tires, which are a phenomenally gummy to red for those off-road applications. It's got a 6.5 under the hood, four speed behind that. Uh, just a great rig. Yeah, I don't know if you guys follow the channel, you might see that I go on and on about on these. Uh, I have one myself. It's a little bit more remedial than this one, but uh, I might actually try and grab the camera and bring that to the house and show, a little, show off a little course that I put together. Kind of like what you see years ago at those Range Rover dealerships. So uh, stay tuned for that. Hopefully I can sneak away and, uh, and get that in there. We do enjoy wheeling quite often, get out there as much as we can. You know, albeit very busy in the shop, but we do like to get out there as much as possible, almost daily in the summertime. So without going into too much detail on that and ruining or kind of giving you a teaser for the upcoming episode, let's go into this truck right here. Two-tone paint, green with the black accents, looks phenomenal, just love it. Everyone's starting to see these black rhinos on more and more builds. These ones are kind of neat because it actually has a two-tone wheel. Gloss black with like a gunmetal gray beadlock uh, rim to it. Pretty neat, we did that on our simulated beadlock wheel on one of our other builds, uh, Daily Driver, a white soft top. Pretty cool look there. I like it when we start playing with contrast. Coming down the side here, you'll see he's got his rock rails mounted to those. I love that feature. On my particular truck, I grabbed a set of rocker panel protection from an H1, which gives me that similar feel, but you can't deny getting some steel down there is a lot better. That's where we came in and presented our rocker panel protection, 316's plate steel. We do have our profile to it to keep that body, keep these side panels off of the rocks when you are out wheeling. Uh, daily, weekly, whatever it be. So either way, it's nice to get some support under that floor. These things are 16th, 8th inch aluminum body to them. So they're very quite, quite weak when you start getting in there. So rock panel is a good thing. Rock rails, if, you have, if that's all you can do, phenomenal outfit there. The helmet top has got a cool look. Uh, whether it be originally used for the ambulance or just some support side of it all, it's just a cool look. I like it because it's got a little more headroom in there. You know, granted, well, with the seating in here, these seats are a little nice, slug, snug, low-profile seat anyway. It's always nice to have that headroom. It makes you feel like you're not claustrophobic in there. The added storage that the, the uh, helmet top gives is pretty cool. Can't deny that, both sides. Kind of like what our fender well racks would be. We're playing around with the idea of taking the wagon windows and making those more utilitarian, designing a search and rescue rack that's almost flipped so that you can access it from here. You may see up on top the condenser for that red dot AC system. I will show off on, when we get to the interior, the other supporting components that makes, uh, makes that worthwhile to put some AC into these very blistering hot uh, vehicles to operate in. Let's go around back, check this out. Again, we've already touched on it in another episode, but the tire care worked out phenomenal. That unique single pick point for that catch bracket, the longer size, really centralizing it between these two antenna mounts, which really is the reason why the custom rack came involved. But again, the 40, look at this thing, it's massive. Gummy tread, black rhinos are a nice looking wheel. They really hit the mark for the Humvee market, Hummer H1 market, a lot of people are snatching these up. Uh, dual antennas is nice, it's got a lot of balance to it. This thing just looks like a beast from behind. Hopefully get some driving footage in a little while so you kind of see it picking its way down the road. Uh, just a cool truck overall. Uh, I love the color too, nothing like that. That matte green, black accents everywhere. So let's get inside and show you what I mean about the complementing component to that condenser up top, the red dot unit. Open up this custom one-off tire carrier, swings way wide. You just love it, love the way this thing finished up. Uh, there we go. So the helmet top, again, has the built-in compartments that limits your fender well storage, but it gives you accessibility from the outside. Uh, you'll see the unit there, the AC unit. He does have a bulkhead divide in here, which is kind of nice. Keeps that cargo area separate. Uh, looks like he's got stall mats as the floor um, accessory there, which is kind of nice. It's somewhat of a sound deadener. So you'll see in there the rest of the red dot system. I'm on the fence about the red dot. It does take up a lot of space, condenser up top, main unit there, and it's, it's limited. But the, albeit, 
the M998 model is limited or the Home V model is limited on <laughs> options to hide the ductwork, uh, i.e. a dash. That's where I think the popularity of our alpha kits come into play. You can take a base model Hum V, put in that alpha dash kit, one of those complementing AC systems, HVAC systems at that point, and you're able to hide the ductwork. Uh, the base model Hum V doesn't have anywhere to hide the duct, that's why you just have that one dash cap. So anyway, getting off a little tangent there. But uh, great system nevertheless, it's nice to have some AC in there. All my units don't have AC and it's quite hot. Now we've checked out the condenser, the back side of that red dot system, the way it's outfitted in the back here. Let's get around into the cabin space to show you how this thing's really been finished off. We are now at the driver's station, if you haven't noticed. Um, gauges are very typical. This is a stock setup. Looks like we have 10,000 miles on this unit. The only thing you might notice different than most M998s is the red dot controls that gives you your AC function and fan speed. Uh, obviously the heater is still controlled with the blower on the passenger side there. Um, the stall pa pad is unique. Uh, a lot of people use that. I think it's a good sound deadener. As you may notice with a couple of the headphones hanging around there, these are quite loud inside. You might also pick up a little reverberation or, and or echoing from my voice because of the added um, headroom, the hard shell helmet top. It's pretty cool though. Uh, regardless of the echoing, it's just neat. I've got a soft top, soft doors, currently no doors. And it's just, you know, it's nice. It's got a nice outfeel, very exposed. But having this roof, having the head, extra headroom is a pretty neat feature. Um, a lot of people get a chance to see these from the outside. Don't get a sneak peek on inside. So I hope you guys enjoy uh, getting a look inside this quite unique and, and very, I feel, very nice setup uh, M998. Let's switch sides and get in the back, show you that red dot unit, the complementing components, and go into a little bit of detail on these quite unique seats that are a pretty good fit for the H1 and Humvee platform. But here we are. I want to switch sides so you guys can really see this red dot system, what completes that kit. Receiver dryer mounts here in this particular application behind that rear passenger side. It, it's industrial. It, it serves its purpose. It introduces cool air to this concealed cabin. It is, however, incomplete. Typically, there's ductwork that runs along, picks up the bows of the soft top or hard top, and dumps air over the passenger driver. I imagine they didn't do that because of the head top application. And also, again, it's just putting air in the system, so it, 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 it works. I go back to what I mentioned earlier about our Alpha Dash Kit and how popular that's been because it does introduce an ability to add ducting to a uh, Humvee. You know, you get our HVAC system, which revolutionizes the heating, ventilation, air conditioning of a Humvee, and particularly the H1 also. It improves all those systems and gets it to where you have the full ductwork to each vent, giving you airflow at each, uh, each opening throughout that dash. Ex uh, the auxiliary kit also is something you can add to that. This particular Humvee can take advantage of that, and I'll show you that since you open the hood, because it has, again, that dual voltage uh, regular generator that I talked about on a previous vlog. So that would be the 12 volt side of that dedicated to that HVAC, which is typically built for the H1, and the 24 side to contain and maintain the operating systems of this particular M998. So anyway, cool system. Just again, another view. A lot of you guys haven't seen the inside of a helmet top. One guy wanted to share that with you, just like the last few episodes, just sharing what we get exposure to, so you guys can get a, get a kick out of what we're dealing with. One of those things being right in front of me, the Chrysler Pacifica, I believe. Uh, I think it's 2017 model, but these are the stow and go seats, twin armrests. They fit well. The footprint of the cabin space on an H1 Humvee, very limited. You know, we've done Recaros, we've done Corbeaux, we've done a bunch of different seats, our own seat models out there, mostly for the, the Humvee model, but it's always limited. It's always trying to find that one to fit and you know, plug in place here. A lot of the times the seats will come up and flare out for that, that shoulder support, but being the B pillars right there, it's always a hindrance down on the sides where the seat sits either side of the tunnel those seats always have a tendency to flare out and um, causing trouble with insulation Recaro's is much worse for that this seat sits well it's nice and shallow gives you some head space it's a pretty cool seat if you guys want to be the, do the do-it-yourselfer this would be a go-to option and you can't deny the fit and finish of it is
so now we got the hood open on this 04 M998, outfitted with the GEP65. Four speed followed behind that. Very envious of this power plant from my Humvee. I've got the original 6.2 three speed snail of a motor. But again, I get out there almost daily and run that thing and have a blast with it. Again, coming up soon, I'm gonna give you guys some content of that. Right in front of me is this beast, something that takes my jealousy that bit further. The 12 volt, 24 volt uh, generator here is the key to what I was mentioned earlier, all that HVAC, all the, the ability to accessorize so well on the inside there. So this thing's fitted uniquely, I think, because I've always seen the serpentine belt on the front. This has got a collection of V-belts, kind of like my old 6.2, um, but uh, usually when I see a vehicle outfitted with a red dot, it'll have that serpentine. So again, still learning new stuff, pretty cool. And that is it, that wraps up this Humvee uh, show and tell with this vehicle. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, we didn't do much on this other than the tire carrier in the back and then corrected stance with those spring installs in the rear. But each time we see something nice come through our doors or something unique or something cool, I'm gonna just throw it in you guys' face. Scroll down, give me some comments, let me know what you think, and we'll go from there. Hit that subscription, notification, and Jason Salazar's Instagram is, I don't know, what is it? Put it on there. <laughs> Blow him up. <laughs> no.